you know it's funny that you guys are interviewing me but when i went to sweden and met with taga and the rest of the guys they said pierre check this out we started this company because of you you and your music future acid the first program we made was rebirth and it was all because we wanted to recreate that 303. We can go straight to you guys and said, these guys invented Acid House. First of all, we wanted to be different in Chicago. We were already in a mindset of trying to find our own sound apart from anyone else. Oh man, they found a nice little niche. Let us find our niche. So that's what we were trying to do. A friend of mine had this bass line playing from the 303. I thought it had a nice texture. It sounds smooth. So I said, all right, we need to get one of those. I think we can do something with that. When we got it, we didn't know how to program it. But when we were listening to it playing a pattern, I just thought I want to mess with it. I need a little more. That's when I start just twisting the knobs, doing it in rhythm to the pattern that's playing. And it just sounded really dope. But now in retrospect, people kind of say, oh, the 303 makes acid, as if rolling had invented a, a box for it to be manipulated like that and make a sound called acid and that's what it was but no it, it wasn't that we just thought we like this but nothing is just one person when we made that track acid track first of all we have to give it to ron hardy if he didn't like it, it would have stopped dead right there he played it once the people didn't like it the floor cleared he played it twice they still didn't like it he played it a third time the same night and they thought, okay, okay, you know, it's kind of grown on me, it's all right. Then he played it a fourth time. They went crazy. <laughs> Who gets the credit? Ron played it four times. Had it not worked, that would have been the beginning or the end. So he gets a piece of that credit. In Chicago during that time, it wasn't a thing called Acid House. It was just, oh, this other guy made one of those acid tracks. But then when it went over to Europe, to England, it became a youth movement. And that's when it became Acid House. So you have all these steps in between that has to happen. I'm thankful to be the spark that helped start it. And that's what I seek to do in other people's life is to be a spark to start a movement. Let's do this. Let's get this out there where it's based on music integrity. We want to drive this scene. We don't want other people driving our scene and our music that don't care about it. Let's take it back to the roots, you know what I'm saying? Let's make it about the music. Yep. And if it starts with this crew to do that, then so, so be it. Be it. And let people look <laughs> and say, you know what? That's dope right there. Yeah, yeah. And it's about the music. It's not about any one person. We need some rallying. With reason, I didn't feel like I had to change the way I process my ideas. I could still think in an analog way, even though I was working with a digital product. This song here is Meet Hate With Love, featuring Ann Nesby, and it's coming out on Get Physical Records. Let us always realize that we don't have to hate. We try to this particular track is a wild pitch track, which is a style that I coined in the 90s. Starts with usually a kick and just things kind of come in as layers and stuff like that. First of all, I never really use just one kick. I have the kicks a few different places. I have like a kick on here. I have another one. So these two kicks, I will route them out and have them come up by themselves so that it can have its own space to work. A kick is sounding booming as it is. Really all you really need to do is put it at the right volume in the mix. When people are doing all this extra mixing and stuff, they're over mixing because the sounds and samples kind of come already ready to, to use. I'm one to believe less is more. You get more clarity with less. I started all my tracks basically a subtractor and a redrum. To me, the subtractor is the ultimate bass. A lot of times to fatten that up, I'll run it through the screen. I usually end up on the tape distortion. It gives it the right amount of grit that I want on the track. I just got on this parsec. Woo! So this one here, I just like totally got the high sound on this. And this is my kind of Italio disco type sound, you know. And 
and I'll layer it like that. That's at different points, I'll come with that sound just to add some, some depth to the bass part. And then for deepness, I got this other parsec sound right here. This is really deep, this one here. I don't have to have the sub and the highs in one bass. So if you can use three different bass sounds to create the mid, the highs, and the sub, you're gonna get a really pure, thick bass that you can EQ all three sounds independently. The thing is, we get to the point people keep thinking, well, where is the soul at in the music? And it's because we're not producing music from the soul anymore. We're producing it from the brain. It's all about X's and O's. That's not how music is supposed to be. It's supposed to be full of emotion. Perfection is the human imperfections. That's what you need to make perfection. And that really is, for me, the biggest reason why I think people need to get with reason. It makes you think in more of an organic, spiritual way by just how the program is set up and how you, you work it. Music is the vehicle that I use to open doors to touch people's lives. I really want to inspire. One of the greatest artists that's ever come out of electronic music, Daft Punk, when they first decided to make house music, the first song they heard was a song myself and Spanky did called Can You Feel the Bass? It's on a documentary and it's like it's just bugged out how what we've done has inspired people and generations and incredible talent. I don't think you have to be some kind of musical genius but you do need to be extremely dedicated and you need to have passion to drive it. Stop.